you, you, you read a lot of articles and papers by people complaining about cancer culture. Hello, Graham. Uh, in this video, I'm going to attempt to explain to you why you've received so much quote unquote backlash to what you said there. Uh, of, of course, you could take this explanation itself and define it as backlash. And therein, we've already got to the part to part of the point I wish to make. There's a certain linguistic phenomenon, uh, an intellectually dishonest semiotic sleight of hand trick, whereby people redefine concepts basically on the fly to suit their partisan agenda. <clears throat> they, uh, they take a concept, call it something positive when they do it, and call it something negative when, when their opponents do the same thing. Or a similar thing, or a less bad thing, for want of a better phrase. The, the, the time honored guideline of starting wisdom by calling things what they are is being replaced on an ever growing scale with what, for argument's sake, I'm going to call newspeak culture. We've been warned about this by everyone from George Orwell to Confucius and me since at least 10 years ago. No one listens to me either. Even if they do, they tend to just spin it around and use it to bolster their own hypocritical agenda. It's maddening, Graham. It's like giving water to dehydrated people and watching as they pour it down their pants. That's why I'm sometimes angry and or frustrated. Other people may have different reasons, but perhaps some are more valid than others, but let's try and focus. And you think, in what world are you cancelled? I'm reading your article <laughs> in a newspaper, <laughs> or you're doing interviews about how terrible it is to be cancelled. Yep, we've been here before, and nobody listened, but I'll give it another whirl for old time's sake. If there was a holocaust, how come there are still Jews? And and that's, that's genocide culture, Graham. Your argument wouldn't work even if you were talking about genocide and you're talking about cancellation. As though it's impossible for a cancelled person to still be able to talk somewhere. If I had sincerely said what I just said about the holocaust, I would no doubt be called a Holocaust denier. So would it be fair to call you a denier of what we're calling cancellation? It would, wouldn't it? Because that's literally what you just did. Or, you know, so I think the word is the wrong word. Correct. It is very much a euphemism. A euphemism that means political persecution. I'm repeating myself from, from times past. Uh, this is a, a, it's like a greatest hits compilation. I think uh, the word should be accountability. Right. It's not enough of a euphemism for your liking, so you're using an even more stretched, ridiculous one. See that phenomenon I mentioned earlier about the thing? That's what you're doing. When you approve of the target and direction of the political persecution, you call it the most positive term you can think of. And, and when someone like me raises their hand and points out what you're doing, what do you call it? You'll notice I'm not persecuting you. No one is, as far as I know. You haven't lost your job over what you've said. You haven't lost your bank account over what you said. You haven't, you haven't had your money stolen right over the counter in broad daylight over what you've said, all anyone's done is try to hold you accountable for what you've said by saying something else. But when that happens, what do you call it? You call it abuse. You call it harassment. You call it every universally negative term you can think of. It's, it is pathetic. Graham, you do it because you can. Because you will not be held accountable, let alone cancelled, let alone persecuted, as long as you are espousing a certain side of any given argument. Let's continue. You know, I think, you know, John Cleese has been very public recently about complaining about what you've got to say. And I just think it's, 
It must be, and it must be very hard to be a man of a certain age who's been able to say whatever he liked for years and now suddenly there's some accountability. There's some persecution. I'm not letting you get away with it. And by that I mean I'm going to translate your dishonest, euphemistic newspeak back into reality in the hopes that you can hear what you're doing. To reiterate, you are a man of a certain age who's been able to say whatever he likes for years and there is still no accountability for you because what you like to say is permitted. There, are, you know, it's, it's, it's free speech but not consequence free. <sighs> By that logic, we have the freedom to shoot people. There are consequences for shooting someone but apart from that, we're perfectly free to shoot whoever we want. And if someone holds a gun to your head and says, don't move or I'll shoot you, you're perfectly free to move, aren't you? <laughs> no one's stopping you. It's just that there will be consequences if you do. You're simply being held accountable for moving. You did it again. When you approve of the situation, you call it consequence. When you don't approve, you call it what it is. Or something much worse. What it comes down to is this. Are the consequences fair? Are they appropriate to the action? Is it fair and appropriate to take someone's life just because they moved? And is it fair and appropriate to take someone's livelihood just because they said men are men and women are women? And so, you know, I'm aware that, of saying, aren't mean, you, aren't you aware mean, when you, when you do so, like, I'm aware of I, the things I say. I, I'm not entirely convinced that you are, Graham. <laughs> if there is such a thing as being unaware of what you're saying, you are it. That's, that's a very easy target, isn't it? A sort of, you know, middle-aged man is used to saying what he wants, rule the world, mansplains everywhere he goes, etc., etc. Based Mariella, I wasn't expecting that. Yes, uh, that is another part of the point. It is easy to criticise middle-aged men, or indeed any men. You can just throw up a misandric buzzword like mansplaining and expect that to be the end of it. You can say all manner of bigoted things about men as a whole, and you will not be summarily stripped of the platform on which you said those things. J.K. Rowling has been doing that for years without consequence. But, but for example, J.K. Rowling then, I mean, that, 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 that's harder to, to make a point with, isn't it? When you look at someone expressing what may or may not be popular opinions, but to, to, to be deluged with the kind of anger, rage, death threats, etc. Um, and attempts at censorship, it seems to me something more than just a, a middle-aged man kind of not being able to say something he used to say in the days of empire. What, uh, even in the days of empire, there were very few men anything like as rich and influential as J.K. Rowling is. I thought you were going to say something helpful there, but if your point is it also happens to women, therefore it is a problem then apparently you're not quite aware of what you're saying either. Yeah, I mean, what I feel weird about this is when I'm asked about it, then I become part of this discussion. I know, discussion. that's what I'm wondering. And, and all I'm painfully aware of is that my voice adds nothing to that discussion. Not necessarily. Trans people are better than you, but you're still better than straight people. It's not my rule, but it is the rule. There's no infallible flag for my sexuality. Not even a section of one. I identify as none of your damn business sexual. And I'm sort of embarrassed that I'm somehow drawn into it. You know, and if people want to shine a light on those issues, then, and I hope people do, then talk to trans people. This is going to be difficult for you to hear, and it's going to be difficult for me to say because it could jeopardise my future on this platform, but here it goes. Trans people 
can also be biased. I mean, some cisgendered people are less biased than some trans people. Surely, if you want to make sense of things, the best people to talk to are simply are those who are unbiased, or at least less biased than others, regardless of their identity. Identity is not required in order to make a point or an argument. That's, that's why I refuse to identify as left-wing or right-wing. There is no argument that requires me to do so. I'm sure I have my biases one way or another, but I consider them to be bridges we cross when we get there. Point is, it would be rather absurd to say, if you want to learn about the left-wing, you need to listen to left-wing people. End of story. <laughs> I mean, surely by definition... Left-wing people will give you answers somewhat slanted in favour of the left-wing. <laughs> what you need to do is listen to a variety of voices. You need to weigh the biases against each other and maybe even see if you can discover some objective information along the way, which you can also get from both sides. So, talking to trans people about trans people is not necessarily going to give you the right answer. It's feasible that most transsexuals are biased in favour of transsexuality. It would make sense, wouldn't it? With the obvious exceptions of those who have attempted to, or are attempting to, detransition. Most of them are probably biased against it, with just as much validity. Maybe even more. So, maybe you should talk to them too. Are you including them, too, in your list of people we should talk to? Talk to trans people. Talk to the parents of trans kids. Talk to doctors. Talk to psychiatrists. Talk to someone who can illuminate this in some way. You are not. But you are including the parents of, quote-unquote, trans kids. Are you aware of what you're saying there? Graham, this, this is a cliche at this point, but it bears repeating. The parent of a trans kid is like the owner of a vegan cat. It is obvious who has made that decision. And it is extremely likely that there is some bias going on there. And maybe you should talk to people on the other side of the bias, such as the parents who against their will and without their knowledge, had to deal with their children being groomed by gender ideologues and quacks with scalpels. Only later to regret the irreversible body horrors inflicted on them. By all means, talk to doctors. But again, you need to venture outside the walls of the Tavistock Clinic. Okay? By all means, talk to psychologists. But good luck finding one who's not a gender ideologue of a certain persuasion. I'm in very hot water now, Graham. This is the kind of talk that gets people cancelled. Sorry, accountable. What you're saying is not the kind of... Even though you said trans kids just now. You reeled it off like it's a perfectly uncontroversial thing to say. You know, I'm very aware that as bloke off the telly, you know, your voice can be artificially amplified. Yes, if you say the right things. Like what you just said. If you say the wrong things, like what I just said, you don't even get to be bloke off the telly. And oh, once in a blue moon, that can be good. But most of the time, it's just a distraction. It's worse than that, my brother. It's propaganda. It gets in your head and it screws everything around, but it's not too late to repent. And it's just, you know, it's for clicks, it's for whatever, you know, that you can put my name in a headline, you know, Graham Norton slams, Graham Norton defends, Graham Norton weighs in on. And actually, Graham Norton shouldn't be in your headline. <laughs> oh, you got to feel for the guy. He's right. He's, he's spot on there, but, you know, in the same breath, he couldn't help himself. He thought he was avoiding the controversy, but just like every other bloke off the telly, he's so entrenched in that world. 
he has biases that he doesn't even see as biases, and they just they they just fell out of his skull in passing. And now, irony of ironies, he's in the headlines. If if you if you want to talk about something, talk about the thing. It doesn't you know you don't need to attach a Kardashian or a whatever to a serious subject. The subject should be enough in itself. Yeah, but you just said talk to trans people about trans people. Now you're saying just talk about the thing. The subject should be enough in itself. You've contradicted yourself in a short space of time and I don't think you even did it on purpose. I think you just accidentally gaslit us. This is what happens when you don't pay attention. It, you know, it's the Michael Gove thing about, you know, enough of experts. No, please, can we have some experts? Can we rustle up some experts and talk to them uh, rather than man in shiny pink suit? And then you re-contradicted yourself again. You're turning the gas on and off and on again. Graham, do we just talk about the thing or do we just listen to authorities who call themselves the thing? Experts can be biased too. Did you know that? Especially experts whose paychecks depend on their prejudice. I, I would remind you that we're talking about men and women here. And children. I mean, everyone's an expert on one of those things, aren't they? On account of being one. Uh, also, uh, the overall subject of gender relations is a field I've been studying and talking about as a professional career for like 10 years. But I don't have the audacity to call myself an expert in it. And even if I did, that wouldn't make me one. And even if it did, do not take my word for anything. I have biases. Some that I'm surely not even aware of. Listen to me and listen to feminists of the trans-inclusive and trans-exclusive variety. Then weigh up what you hear. Weigh it all against each other and then come to your own conclusions. Listen to a doctor and then see if you can get a second opinion from another doctor. If the opinions differ or even contradict each other, then once again it's up to you to figure out what you think using your own brain. And if it doesn't concern you, then never mind. You don't have to think about it. You can just say no comment and move on. You certainly don't have to listen to the hideous screeching on Twitter. And good for you, you're not listening to it anymore. You walked away from Twitter of your own accord. And trust me, you will feel the benefit. You will feel a weight lifted off your shoulders. Because Twitter is just like Channel 4 and the BBC and any other TV network you've been ideologically trapped in over the decades. They don't let you think for yourself. They tell you one side of the argument and they ban you for even raising an honest question about the possible existence of any other side. You'll never know what it's like to be pushed off of a platform against your will unless and until you start asking those questions. You chose to leave because you have the privilege of making that decision for yourself. And that's the next best thing when it comes to understanding the nature of this skewed one-way street we found ourselves navigating in the dark. You've escaped now. You're in greener pastures. Congratulations. I hope you find yourself. And I hope in the midst of all of this, you can find some sense of what it feels like to be held accountable. Good luck. Godspeed. Don't like and subscribe, none of it does anything, because this channel is being terminally throttled. Hey, what does that mean? <laughs>